Hey friends, it's me, your boy, Chris Tejas, a portrait and wedding photographer based in Ontario, Canada. Um, I say wedding photographer, but it's actually my first year shooting weddings, which is why I want to talk about this topic today. We're going to do something that I haven't done before, where we are going to start recording and we're just not going to stop till I'm done and we're not going to edit it. And lo and behold, here we are having an awkward conversation over coffee. Let's get two up. Why do you want to get into weddings uh, is a question I was asked when I first started photographing weddings. I was asked it by a few different people, uh, people who were in the industry, people who were outside of the industry, family, friends, kind of all over. And it kind of came down to two things for me. The first one is obvious for everyone. It's one of the paths you can take in photography that is reliably paying well still, right? There's a lot of things that we're worried about are going to change about our industry when it comes to the future. Weddings is something that for the foreseeable future, we're still going to be able to do and people are still going to pay for. So knowing that it is a path that pays well is great. However, for me, the biggest thing was that I love, I love shooting. I love doing events. I think because I came from a street photography background, it, it kind of just made sense to me. Like you're this fly on the wall who's kind of documenting everything. But there's moments where you get to direct, where you get to be very purposeful about the photos you're taking, and that's super cool too, and just not a chance you get in street photography. It, it's sort of like a blending of what I loved, which was portraiture and street photography kind of put into one. And a lot of events are like that, but weddings, everybody looks nice, hopefully. Uh, you know, people are generally in a pretty good mood. It, it's a big party. You're going to a big party. It's like living in the Great Gatsby without all the... You get to go home at the end of the day and not have to actually live in that world, which is kind of ideal. So I think if you're looking at getting into wedding photography, a really important question for yourself is, why do I want to do it? And is it for the right reasons? Because if it's only for money, if it's only for money, I think it's going to be tough. I don't think you'll you'll enjoy the process, and I think that could come through in your work. I don't know for sure. I mean, I, w I wouldn't say like, oh, you're going to take bad photos because your heart's not in it. No, but I just think there's little moments on a wedding day where you either make the choice to dive in deeper or to kind of just cruise through. And if you don't enjoy it, you're going to cruise. It's just the way it is. It's how we all are. So figure that out for yourself first. Number two, I would say figure out a workflow as early as possible. So I'm mostly second shooting. I have a few of my own weddings this year. I think, you know, maybe four or five of my own weddings this year, but most of them are all second shooting, which takes a lot of pressure off. I get to kind of just experiment and have fun when I'm shooting. And I'm still, you know, trying hard and making sure I'm getting the right shots. But at the end of the day, my work day ends that day. Unless I want to, you know, edit the photographs from my own portfolio, which I do, I don't have to do nearly as much as a lead photographer, and that's also why I'm getting paid a lot less. Having said that, I do think no matter what, it's important right away to set up a strong workflow. So for me, my workflow is very simple. Um, I upload everything into Lightroom, and I back up everything there onto an external hard drive. From there, I push everything right away into Imagine AI. If you don't know Imagine AI, it's a very cool program. Basically, it will cull and edit your photos based on either a profile that it makes for you relative to the images that you put into it. So if you have a certain amount of images, you just, you know, that are all kind of in the same style. You feed them all into Imagine, it creates an AI profile for you, and then it will automatically use that profile to uh, edit your images. And it'll adjust things like white balance and exposure, and then apply on all of the sort of creative stuff that you would normally do. If you don't have enough images, you do what I do. You basically just give it a preset and you answer a bunch of questions and then it creates an AI profile for you. And I found it really reliable. So everything goes into Imagine, it calls and, and I make the choice of whether or not I want to edit. You do have to pay for the edits, but not for the calling yet. It's in beta, so it's still free. So, oh man, not editing and drinking coffee is gonna, uh, I'm sorry if you hear a couple burps. So once it's gone into Imagine and it's gone through everything, I can either choose to edit all those photos or I can just export all of the ratings from the culling into Lightroom and then I can just edit the ones I want to edit for my portfolio. Regardless, it's great to have that set up now. If you want to use that, I have a code down below. You get 1,500 free edits, which is 500 more than you'd get if you just went to their website. So I do think it's worth it. Use that code below and um, see if it works for you. I've, I've really enjoyed it. I have two profiles set up for myself, a color and a black and white, and I just find it's it's very quick and easy. 
um, another option. My color and black and white photos, I they're, they're actually quite similar the way they're edited overall. So what I do uh, to save on some editing fees is I basically run everything through Imagine. I do the color profile. It spits out all the images. And then after that, I create virtual copies of everything. And then on those virtual copies, I apply my black and white preset. But what's nice is it already has the exposure and white balance saved and my preset doesn't touch white balance or exposure. So it means that I'm getting proper exposed black and white images and it does like 90% of the work. From there, I can upload galleries to pick time and that's it, super simple. I think setting up your workflow quickly and easily beforehand is gonna be super important for the longevity of your career in weddings. And if you can do that, it's gonna make your life just so much easier. And even though it might be overkill right now if you're brand new, it's probably still a smart practice. Okay, so um, if you are new into the wedding space and you wanna think about what is it that I should be doing to improve what should I be doing to get better or to book more clients or whatever I mean there's there's a million different things people will tell you the thing I have really dragged my heels on drug my heels been dragging my heels on the most is um, creating a really strong portfolio and website and uh, and just getting really active on socials it's something that I'm not great at it's something that I have to get better at and honestly I would say that would be the number one thing that I'm going to plan to do moving forward. I've got like five days left before my documentary premieres. Um, info below because it's pretty cool. Um, and after that's done, I have a bit of breathing room to be able to start working on that stuff. But creating a really strong online presence with a like great SEO and all that stuff, all the boring shit that isn't photographing, I think is really helpful. And I want to have all that launched by like, you know, end of November so that SEO can SEO and do its thing and the algorithm can go rhythm for me and then hopefully i can in the new year when you start to see bookings i can start to see some bookings for next year so that's the kind of not so fun part of things but the thing you really have to do uh, the other thing i did and this is really interesting and i would highly recommend this once you get your website up and going start blogging i know it sounds like an advice from like 2011 but i promise like okay interesting story so I've now shot at a bunch of nice venues around the area, and I have slowly started blogging about each of those venues. I am trying to give opportunities to tell people like, hey, uh, here's what's great about this venue. Here's where the great light is to take photos. Here's some photos of the day that I can share and all that kind of stuff. Really simple. Um, almost like a blog that you're like, why would anyone want to read this? But here's the thing. Couples getting married do want to read it, and they're searching. And so I have actually had someone reach out to me I published a blog post and the SEO on my website is terrible right now. Like I said, I need to work on all that, but I published a blog a week and a half, two weeks later, I had someone reach out and uh, inquire about a wedding with me because they found me when they were searching out uh, about that venue. So they had already booked that venue. They were just cruising online, trying to look for blogs and info about it. And they came across my website. They saw I wrote a blog. They reached out to me. So it's, it's crazy to think like that you know what took me 20 minutes to write a blog could in theory result in a $5,000 wedding package being booked so blog do the thing make your website robust all that stuff and other than that um I would say just do your best to surround yourself with really good people um I've been so lucky that I have great people around me and I have been kind of brought into the fold by some extremely talented photographers who are not gatekeepers and are not trying to make my life harder uh, and trying to like stop me from shooting. They're really trying to actively get me shooting. They're sending weddings my ways if they can't shoot them, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's really beautiful. So I would say get good people in your corner and the way to get good people in your corner is to be a good person be a good person to work with be a good person to be around be good to the couples be good to the venue like just treat people the way that people ought to be treated and the way you would want to be treated and have fun like remember that wedding days like there's some crazy stress that happens at wedding days but like you can have fun you can be the positive experience and that's so important because as the photographer, you're probably spending the most time with the with the bride and groom of anyone on that day, pretty much. Even with each other, because you're there for the getting ready separately or whatever. You are, like, the way you're handling things is going to be emblematic of how they are going to remember their day. 
and you have a lot of power in that and I think if you can just be awesome if you can be super fun and great then you're gonna have a great time and you know that's been my biggest goal take great photos but be a great person and that's the best you can do so I'm gonna get ready for the wedding I'm shooting in a few hours now and um, I hope you have a wonderful day I'm shooting this on Canadian Thanksgiving there's some problems in this country when it comes to Thanksgiving but it's still a beautiful time for people to get together and celebrate the harvest and uh what a nice time for a wedding too so cheers i've got my pumpkin-y um mug and this is an experiment in doing a completely unedited blog post blog post ah i wish i could edit that out bye <laughs>